Oh, hello there. Welcome to Talking Tennis. Sorry I'm late. Uh, this is Hubert Hercatch versus Casper Ruud in Monte Carlo on what has been a very interesting uh, day of tennis, really. Um, not too much in terms of final sets drama. Um, we, um, uh, we obviously had a meltdown from Medvedev. Uh, and Tsitsipas almost failing to close it out against Alexander Zverev. Um, I think it's a third set at the minute between um, uh, Dimitrov and Runa. Last I checked, yes, it's three all in the third um, on the other court. So, hey, uh, Reese, lovely to see you, as always. Looking forward to talking tennis with you. Let me know your thoughts or any questions you have about this match or anything tennis-related. Um, yeah, Djokovic coming through against Musetti. Um, Musetti initially providing a chance before Djokovic dealing with it pretty well. Um, we're into a rally at the minute, by the way, uh, between her catch and Rude. Um, and some interesting results. Um, in terms of, um, obviously, I've got someone on um, Twitter asking me, who do I have to win? Um, I really don't know because obviously this should have been the Estoril final were it not for an amazing performance by Pedro Martinez. And obviously I was going to make a crack about this being a battle of two clay court specialists because Hubert Hercatch stormed the Estoril title and has been growing in his reputation on clay um, in recent years. Um, has a clay to 50 title of which Casper Roo is obviously an expert in picking up. Um, oh, that's interesting, Reese. So, um, are you watching the match with me talking the background, or am I? Um, are you are you relying on me to describe to you what's going on? Which is what I usually end up doing. We've got Casper Rude serving, then goes for the big forehand up the line, and then finishes with an overhead to go 30 15 up in this game. Rude seems to go his mojo back. He's obviously back at the top 10. Her catch is making his way deeper into the top eight. They're both in form. Um, yeah, I mean, right now, I would say based on the form we've had with Rude, maybe just not having quite enough to get past some of the top guys. Um, and um, uh, is it top guys, I, I'm giving her catch the edge in this one, actually, controversially. Um, OK, Reese. so what I tend to do here on the channel is um, I tend to describe um, sort of as much as what's going on. But I also enjoy um, having a having conversations. So by all means, if you are watching the match, let me know your thoughts or any questions you have, because obviously you're still learning about tennis. Um, and more than happy um, to um, sort of um, chat with you whilst we're on the stream. So um, who's on plus 220? Is it Rude or her catch? By the way, I've got um, Dot on Twitter um, coming to me. Um, 40-15, by the way, Casper Rude um, serving, looking like both guys are currently uh, uh, guys are currently going with serve. Interestingly, I think this is going to be an interesting contrast of players because Rude is obviously well known for his very, very strong forehand, particularly on clay. As a great return from her catch. Oh, no, it's just, just missed it. So it's two games all and uh, Rude comfortably holds serve. They're both good servers. Her catch has um, the the reputation for having the harder serve to break. Um, so um, interesting. Her catch the underdog again. That's obviously looking maybe at sort of Rude's reputation more than necessarily recent form. Uh, but yeah, I think on a backhand to backhand exchange, her catch is going to come out on top. So, her catch is definitely the far stronger backhand. So depending on how these different wings go, um, I think this is going to be a lot of moving around on court because 
Uh, they may be able to have up the line shots if they can get away with it. Um, backhand cross court from Rude to the backhand of Hercatch. Here we go into another backhand to backhand rally, which is the kind of rally I would expect Hercatch to be winning, which Hercatch can to win inside out forehand. Backhand from Rude to the Hercatch going up the line with a forehand to the Rude forehand. That's a risky move. Hercatch goes up the line with his forehand, and that's an excellent move because the Rude backhand ends up being dumped into the net. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, your um, interviews, um, John, um, with. Um, Sainep, um, and um, I have to be said, I'm really enjoying meeting all of these new players that you are interviewing. Obviously, you've got brought some great press conferences from uh, Maria Sakari, Elena Ostapenko, and Caroline Vosniaki. But I do have to say, um, it's been a, a fantastic opportunity to get to know some of these lower ranked players, these players from outside the top 100 um, who've made a big impact. So, um, yeah, like Francesca Giorgia, like um, the uh, the Dutch girl who beat um, Ostapenko, whose name I forget right now. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, John's got um, uh, coming up for us. Uh, 15 all, by the way, in this match. So I'm going to keep um, bringing you uh, as much information as uh, I can. Hopefully you are enjoying it. Her catch goes out wide with the first serve. Too wide. Goes up the T with the next one. Backhand from Rude in play. Neutral right at the minute. In, up the line. Backhand from Rude. Oh, that was really good. That was really good. And we've seen strong shots from the her catch forehand and the Rude backhand, which is typically not seen as their strengths. Very interesting. 15.30 now. Kasper Rude starting to maybe carve himself a break point opportunity. Were the odds right in making her catch the underdog? Five winners each in this match, according to the stats just flashing up on the screen as Hubert Hercatch is going up the tee. Short return from Rude, drop shot from Hercatch, two goods, gets to 30 all. Not too much of a disaster here. So yeah, obviously, the um, reason why I'm talking about uh, sort of the, the Turkey versus Sweden match is obviously the uh, the Beijing King Cup is in action, and we've got cub we've got a man on the ground um, there to bring us all the interviews from uh, the competition to try and find out who the people playing off for a place in next year's Beijing King Cup will be. Um, it's a bit like if you're new to tennis, it's a bit like having the World Cup qualifying during the for, for like the people who didn't make the World Cup at the same time as the World Cup. Kind of pre-qualifying, as it were. Her catch is facing break point, by the way. His first serve has gone wide. Um, so I may be jinxing him by saying he's hard to break, but let's see if he can get himself out of trouble. Second serve from her catch goes out wide. Backhand from Rude in play. Forehand her catch moving Rude around. Forehand cross court from Rude. Forehand up the line from her catch. Really loopy. Backhand Rude cross court. Backhand her catch to the backhand of Rude cross court. Backhand her catch up the line. Just clips the net and just makes it over. Very, very fortunate Hubert her catch to get that point because that one, that could have dived on his side. It didn't. And he has by a great stroke of fortune, saved himself from being broken. If you are enjoying this, by the way, give this stream a like. Um, we've obviously had a couple of other streams today. Damien brought us Djokovic versus Musetti. Kira brought us um, the match between um, Sinner and Struff. Sinner's looking very, very strong. Kasper Rude runs that one down. Her catch goes back behind him with an overhead. That was too good, but the movement from Rude is really, really strong. Her catch has got the advantage in this game, though. Speaking of Runa Dimitrov, Runa is potentially two points away from breaking Dimitrov. It's 15-30 on the Bulgarians' serve. Huge serve out wide from her catch, but just, just misses by that much. Second serve. Goes out wide again. Backhand from Rude. Way out of court, but runs to maintain position. Her catch goes inside out with a forehand. Now they're trading backhands. Her catch still trying to keep Rude pinned down in one particular corner. Trying to leave the, the space open, but great backhand Rude forces. Her catch will be defensive. Rude goes for the inside out forehand. He went for the haymaker, puts it in the net, and her catch holds 3-2. But that was a definite opportunity for Casper Rude as they change ends. 
Yeah, a few, definitely a few stories from uh, this tournament so far. I'm looking forward to talking with Jerome in an hour. He's going to be joining us in about an hour um, to either cover the rest of the match or um, potentially also uh, to um, uh, to like talk about all the big stories from Monte Carlo so far. Um, we are obviously, um, by the way, it's at 30 all for Runa Dimitrov. And I will be bringing you score updates from that as Dimitrov moves to game point. It looks to be a very, very tight match going on on um, Court Rainier third. Obviously, we've got um, Court de Prince and Court Rainier the third. Those are the two main courts here in Monte Carlo, which is a stunning tennis venue. It has to be said. Um, in terms of the view you get from the stands, you could look across the tennis court out into the wide blue ocean. And I don't think anyone, any other court um, anywhere in the world boasts a sea view in that way. Um, everyone goes on about how amazing it is. I think the only views that could really uh, match it uh, would be um, uh, the only views that could really match it would be maybe um, Kitschbul in the ATP um, on the ATP side, uh, which um, Uh, yeah, ATP side for, um, which is in the middle of the mountains, actually. So you've got this wonderful mountainous landscape around the court. Um, looks absolutely gorgeous. So um, something to check out. Yes, very close indeed, Reese. Um, Rude could have got that break. And we're into a Rude service game now. And Rude's bossing the rally with the forehand, running around to hit it. Backhand from her catch cross court. Now Rude has to slice the backhand. Backhand again from her catch. So the backhand of Rude, they're still keeping each other in backhand. Um, like her gel up the line from Rude, forehand looped from her catch, backhand cross court to the um, her catch backhand where she tries to change direction and puts it in the net, and it's 15 love. And that was brutal from Rude, but excellent defense from her catch. This could be a very, very good match. I need to have a look at pictures of Gestad. Um, let's have a look, see if I can have a look at it because I, I didn't think about um, Gestad uh, tennis, yeah, Swiss Open. Let's have a look. So let's have a look at some images of. Uh, dad. Oh, yes, I see what you mean, uh, Ghosty. Yes, there's definitely some lovely uh, mountains in the background there. Um, so, yeah, very similar to Kitchbull. Maybe not quite as rugged as the Kitchbull, but sort of very sort of similar uh, kind of vibe. Tennis in the mountains, that tends to be what happens in there. Um, 15 all, by the way, as Rude puts um, a, as Rude nets a shot. Um I am going to do a uh, selfish plug, um, Reese. if you are interested. I do actually host a podcast that isn't um, affiliated with Talking Tennis, uh, but uh, I do host a podcast called Ground Pass, which is for um, new um, tennis fans. It's for fans such as yourself who are still learning about the game um, and the sport and just getting into it. So we kind of um, keep things at a... Um, a level that's easy to to understand. We don't go too in depth, um, and we talk about what it's like um, to be a tennis fan. Uh, the stories the tour is telling. Um, so if you want to check that out, you um, that podcast is on all platforms. So Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, anywhere you get a podcast, really. Even, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a selfish plug from me. Um, Ground Pass, it's called. Um, and you can follow us on um, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter. Rude's got 40-15 on his serve. First serve is long, by the way. Um, Ghosty, you're asking me to spell Kitschbul for you. Um, sure. So it's, um, yeah, it's K-I-T-Z-B-U-H-E-L. Um, or the Austrian Open, if you just want to Google that. Yeah, actually, the landscape is very, very similar. As Rude holds, by the way, to 15, three games all. Um, very similar, maybe a little bit just closer to the mountains, or the mountains feel a little bit more close together than the Gestad, Gestad um, photos. Um, yeah, you are just going to put it in the... Um, uh, the chat in there for you. So um, looped forehand from her catch. Forehand up the line from Rude is Groot. That's a like Rude special there. Love 15. 
again, getting into her catch's game. Um, okay, Reese. so you've not, you're not familiar with her catch or rude then? Um, or both? If not, I, if, if not, I'm happy to give you a bit of a rundown um, on both players as much as I can can share. Back, uh, great serve from her catch. Um, but unfortunately, it's a let, so he's got to reset there. Yeah, the Austrian mounted look lovely. My uh, my mum went to Austria um, when she was a student. Um, talks about it very um, positively. Makes me curious to go and have a visit. Um, her catch is let um, and um, has led to a first serve in the net. Backhand in play from Rude as again her catch is going for the out wide serve to pin him down and Rude goes for the powerful inside out forehand. That's two forehand winners and it's love thirty and again Rude is carving himself opportunities on the her catch serve and the clay may be neutralising some of the advantages that her catch gets from his serve. Tell you what, this could be one of I don't know if this can be Casper Rude's best win of the year, but if he's beating her catch on a clay streak, that's going to be up there for the year so far for the Norwegian. So first serve's been missed by her catch. Um, second serve, middle of the box, forehand to forehand exchange. Great slice on the defence from Rude. It's being pinned down by the her catch forehand. Still managed to clear it. Now he's going to have to run down the drop shot, but it's too good from Hubert her catch. That was a great drop shot. And it's 15-30. Rude did not have enough time to run that down. Um, so it's 15-30 for um, uh, for these guys. Okay, yeah, I can then, I'm more than happy to give you um, a rundown of these guys, um, uh, Reese. maybe at this next change of ends. Great serve from her catch, who then follows up with a plus one forehand to the rude backhand, really short forehand inside out from her catch. Rude scrambles that, which for her catch tries to put away with the forehand. He's very close to that line. Rude is going to call that it's out. He's circling the mark. Yeah, that's definitely out. There's definitely gaps to the line. And the attempt by her catch to try and finish it has been miscalculated. And Rude now has break points to go up in this set. Big, big opportunity for Casper Rude. By the way, it's five games all on the other court between Holger Rune and Grigor Dimitrov. First serve from her catches into the net. That's not a good start from the pole who's trying to hold serve here. Try not to go out wide with the second. Forehand in play from Rude. Forehand up yeah, the line from her catch is going to come in behind. And Rude puts the backhand into the net. Seeing her catch coming in, putting the pressure on the shot, having to rush it. Backhand goes into the net. And this is the first break point saved by Hubert Hercatch. So here we go. Here we go. I'm going to, um, I will give you a rundown on both players after this game. But I think that this, um, the tension here does need to be addressed as we have uh, Hercatch going up the tee, misses it. So again, he's going to have to defend on a second serve. 30-40 here in Monte Carlo as out, out wide with the serve. Again, trying to pin Rude back into his backhand corner. But Rude's get the fine to play, but it clips the net, taking some of the pace off. Runs around and hits an inside out forehand. Backhand up the line from Hercat. Rude still runs it down, goes cross court with the forehand. Hercat having to slide for that forehand. Backhand Rude, just about in play. And Hercat goes long with the backhand. Rude apologises because obviously he benefited slightly from clipping the net. I'm not sure how, I think that was just convention, to be honest. I don't think it actually benefited him that much. Um, but obviously, the ball clipped the net and went over. 4-3, Rude leads with a break, and he's two games away from taking this first set. Meanwhile, on the other court, Dimitrov is 30 love up, five games all. Something to keep an eye on. So, yes, break for Hubert Hercatch. So, yeah, um, let's talk about these guys. So, um, Kasper Rude. It's from Norway. Um, he is currently ranked. Uh, where is his current rank? I believe his current ranking is 10th in the world. Um, he um, was top eight recently again and has been as high as world number two. He's made three Grand Slam finals in his career. Um, he's been to the French Open final twice, lost to um, Djokovic last year and the Dal the year before, and he lost to Carlos Alcaraz in the US Open final of 2022. Um, very much has a reputation of someone who his best surface is clay, which is what they're playing on now, um, but he's never actually won anything higher than a 250. 
um in terms of sort of tournaments you know they're, they're, they're kind of classed at different levels of prestige and he's he's won the fourth level of fourth most prestigious tournaments having said that to make three grand slam finals a lot of players don't make that many um and he was in with a good chance in that Alcaraz final at US Open, interestingly, even though that wasn't his preferred surface. Meanwhile, um, Hubert Herkacz, who is from um, Poland, he is a uh, two-time um, champion at the Masters 1000 level, which is the level below Grand Slam. So he won Miami in 2021, beating Yannick Sinner, and he won Shanghai last year, beating Andrei Rublev in the final. Um, he has a career high of number eight, which um, he has now recently returned to, um, and has also a Wimbledon semi-final under his belt. Very much, rep uh, very much uh, prefers faster courts. Um, very good in finals, but not necessarily always great at getting there. Um, that seems to be sort of her catch's um, thing. I guess the only other thing I want to talk about in terms of these guys is they are both regarded as two as the nicest guys in tennis um, for it. Sort of very mild-mannered, very polite, um, and just all-around likeable, really. As they're into a backhand-to-backhand -backhand run-in, her catch has gone wide, uh, gone long, 15 all. So there you go. That's a little bit of a rundown of um, some career highs for these guys. Um, uh, I don't think Rude has ever really, I, I don't think Rude has ever beaten um, Djokovic or he's definitely never beaten Nadal. Um, always in awe of Nadal. He's never beaten Alcaraz. Uh, her catch again, similar situation, very much at the disadvantage against the very, very best players, but does have a very good record with Daniel Medvedev. Second set for Rude. Um, backhand is long on the return from her catch as he overcooks it. 30-15. Uh, no problem, Reese. Happy to help. Sean has a question. I wonder how many coaches have mentioned the Dahl declining as a motivation for the French this year. Um, motivation for who, Sean? Motivation for the Dahl or motivation for um, their players as Rude is keeping um, her catch on the defence. Her catch is just about making balls in the minute. Inside out forehand from Rude, cross court backhand from her catch, and then backhand cross court from Rude is long. From her catch is long. It's forty fifteen. And again, just um, Rude is currently bullying her catch with that forehand. Her catch's defence is actually pretty good. I'm I'm impressed. He's definitely um, showing himself to be in that sort of similar category of maybe also. Uh, Medvedev and Zverev of being a very sort of uh, tall guy with a big serve, but also a uh, decent defender. Um, uh, Rude is now um, bouncing uh, the ball and going into to try and save game point. Goes up the tee. Really not, uh, again, Rude, uh, her catch can't cope with the kick on that serve. Puts it in the backhand into the net on the return. And Rude has now got some daylight. 5-3. Her catch is going to serve to stay in this set. Okay, so you're Sean, you're talking about players, um, coaches, players. So, I mean, to be honest, I don't know if the, the coaches need to say anything and the players just know it themselves. Like Nadal declining, the French Open's a little bit more a bit more available, but Djokovic is still there. I think it's Djokovic declining that's going to give people hope. Um, mate, as her catch dumps a forlorn drop shot into the net, love 15. I think uh, her catch is um, uh, not her catch. Yeah, I think uh, anyone who's playing the French, the other player to consider is Carlos Alcaraz, who is also very, very good on clay. And I think it also depends on who the players are, because I think clay is where most of the top 10 kind of come alive. If I was going to say someone like Kasper Ruud or Andre Rublev or Alexander Zverev or Stefano Tsitsipas sneaking themselves a grand slam, it would be at the French because they come alive on clay. Far more so than, hard, than on hard quarters. Um, her catch as a serve volley at love 30 to make it 15-30. Puts that plus one forehand away. Um, but at the minute, the, the, the French Open's got this stranglehold of Djokovic and Nadal until Djokovic declines it's going to be a bit more of an open season. Um, as again, plus one forehand volley from her catch to get to the 30 all. 
two bits of seven volume clay there from the pole. So there you go. That's that's my take on it, on it. I think the coaches will definitely be using that as reminding their players of it, but I think players will probably figure it out themselves. I think anyone outside the top 10 is still going to struggle to win the French because I think, depending on who it is, I think obviously it depends where City passes, maybe top, maybe top 12, um, actually, given City passes like number 12 right now. But yeah, for me, I think a dream scenario would be where um, yeah, the top 10 all have a reasonable chance, like Djokovic, Alcaraz, Sinner, um, Rublev, Rude, um, Zverev, and Tsitsipas. Depending on your preference, obviously, Zverev winning the French Open would not be, uh, would not create the ideal, um, how would I say the the I would not be the ideal winner in terms of promoting the sport, um, but um, in terms of making a competitive field, it makes things a little bit more interesting. And there's one or two other players out there who um, are dangerous on clay. Medvedev occasionally can be, although he wasn't today. Uh, but there you go. That's kind of a rundown of how I see the situation of um, whilst Djokovic is in the mix. Um, it's it's going to be difficult um, for anyone and Alcaraz because I think Alcaraz uh, on clay um, he's very comfortable in it probably uh, has an edge over most players. That being said, um, I don't think his advantage is that big over the rest of the field as maybe some of his contemporaries who have been on clay and I'm thinking of Djokovic and Nadal and Federer back back in the day because people forget how good Federer was because he never he only won the one French and always lost to Nadal but Nadal is the best clay court player in history no question like Bjorn Borg is possibly the only other candidate for that but given how Nadal barely lost on the surface you have to kind of say he he figured it out Rude is serving for the first set by the way um, Rude, who um, considers Rafael Nadal a hero of his, and it's a great first serve. Which he tries to follow up with a drop shot, and it ends up in the net. That was not the best choice. Plus one, he could have gone for anything. He tried to be too clever, and it's love fifteen. He's in danger, and he's possibly in danger of getting her catch back in the match. Rude has to get his head in the game here if he's going to put this set away. Casper Rude. Going to go for a first serve out wide. That's an ace. Oh, no, it wasn't. It clipped the net. He was hoping it was an ace, but unfortunately it clipped the net. So it's a let and we start again. Um, that's going to be some frustration for Kasper Rude from Norway. Goes out wide, misses it. Second serve for Kasper Rood. Second serve, again, going for a risky one there, and then runs around for the entire forehand, but doesn't quite get the angle, and Hercatch is able to run it down. Now goes cross-court with the forehand, pins for Hercatch down the forehand corner, now goes back behind. Hercatch stretching for it. That forehand was way too good from Kasper Rood. Absolutely brutal, and it's 15 all. And the ball girls are all laughing because that ball nearly hit, it went into them, like the, the ones who are kind of standing on the side waiting for uh, their turn to go on court. As, yeah, the top spin from Rood's... Um, they, they saw sort of uh, her catch struggling to deal with the uh, um, uh, the top spin and then sort of giving the girls a th thumbs up. Great unretable surf from Casper Rude, 30-15. Goes to you are right, Gustavo Querton, great player on clay. Three French Opens, one of the best in history, uh, players in history. But he didn't have quite the sort of unbeatable sheen that Nadal and to a certain extent Borg did. And Djokovic could have, but he was he's he's had his career in the shadow of Nadal. On clay, anyway. Everywhere else, Nadal was having to compete with him. Backhand from Root, the forehand inside out by her catches wide 40-15. Kasper Rude has two set points to take the early advantage in this in this match. It's gone very quick, it has to be said. Probably need to check what's happening in the other match as well. 
Oh, good goal. Dimitrov potentially two points away. We might have to switch over. Inside out forehand from Kasper Ruud trying to win this set. Forehand from her catch is good. That was a winner. 40 30. First set points saved. Hold on. It's juice at 6 5 on the Runa serve, by the way. Dimitrov is two points away from knocking out the defending finalist from last year. The defending champion, Andrei Rublev, is already out. Great first serve from Rude, who then goes for the forehand into the net, misses it. Misses opportunity. Two set points come and go. It's back to juice. Drama, drama going on all over Monte Carlo Country Club right now. Um, Ghosty, you are quite right to give Kuetin his props. Don't particularly want to do him down. Like, to say he's not the best in clay ever is, like, not a dismissal at all of how good his career was. Unretainable serve from Rude, who feel, gets himself another set point. I do want to go and see what's happening with Grigor Dimitrov right now, who actually has a match point against Holger Rune. We've got set point here on Court Rainier the third between her catch and Rude. Court de Prince is where Runa and Dimitrov are battling right now. So I've obviously got my courts mixed up uh, earlier. Casper Rude served out wide. Backhand from her catch. Forehand Rude to make her catch run for the forehand. Forehand up the line from Rude, moving her catch from side to side. Her catch slices defensively. Rude goes inside out on the forehand. Her catch tries to run down the backhand. It doesn't work. And Rude and, and, and Rude has the first set. And Holger Runa has advantage to take this sec to take the deciding set into a tie break on court de Prince, and I am going to be switching over to that match now. I'm going to switch over and take bring you the end of Runa Dimitrov and I will switch back to her catch rude because I think this is where all the big drama is. Yeah so I've switched courts now and I'm going to be taking taking you through what is happening. Huge opportunity as Runa has a second serve. Slice from Dimitrov to the Runa backhand. They're going cross court. Slice Dimitrov. Forehand Rude inside out. But can slice by Dimitrov. Forehand inside out Rude. They're just going same sort of directions all the time. No one's changing direction at the minute. Runa, Runa is just happy to just rally with the Dimitrov slice and overcooks the backhand. And the patience from Dimitrov just works. Runa misses and it's back to juice. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ghosty. Obviously, Jim Courier winning two French Opens. Probably one of the best on clay from the early 90s. Absolutely. Narrowly lost third one as well to Bruguera in the 93 final. Here we go. Um, Holger Runa serves, goes out wide, forehand from Grigor Dimitrov. And Runa can't deal with the return, scoops it out of court. There's another match point for Grigor Dimitrov, who is having an amazing 12 months at the minute. Absolutely amazing. And the crowd are getting up. There's Dimitrov fans getting everyone hyped. Dimitrov back in the top eight in the live rankings. And this will confirm it by beating Holger Runa, who... Is probably actually in danger of dropping out the top 10 if he loses here. Serve for Runa. Misses. Second serve for the Dane. Scandinavians in action. Or here. But it's going to be pain for one and success for the other. Short return from Dimitrov. And Runa punishes it with a brutal inside out forehand. Winner. Saves another match point And we're back to juice. What is What is this match? I think I'm going to have to um, uh, make sure that we uh, we cover this one. I think I'm just going to change screen so that we can see it. On I'm just going to make sure I change the screen and see what's happened. Um, yeah, so we got uh, as we are doing that, we've got uh, Holger Runa serving, and it's uh, a let. So he's got to start again at this juice point. This ghost is saying Runa is wearing yellow, this sort of danger yellow, this sort of wasp yellow, red, yellow and black, dangerous. Dimitrov wearing sort of white, um, white shirt, white backwards baseball cap with black shorts. 
as the return on the backhand from Dimitrov goes long and Runa has game point again, back to a tie break. And he's got noisy fans as well. The crowd are absolutely loving it here at the Monte Carlo Country Club. Sean, um, I'm sure Jane is somewhere in chat and I'm sure she can uh, give you some, uh, some of the comments that you desire. First serve from Runa is off the top of the net and not even in the tram line. Second serve to take us to a tie break. Backhand from Ru Dimitrov. Oh my word! Runa tried to go for the haymaker, completely dragged it wide. The ball ends up in the middle of nowhere. And it is now deuce again. And this game has gone on for 12 minutes would you believe how many match points have come and gone for dimitrov so i want to know super super tight game here on the court de pense or court, court de pense i should say first serve from uh, runa brings a very short ret return from dimitrov and he and runa punishes that with a big forehand winner and it's advantage runa again Look at him, zoned in. Holger Runa. Seems to be resetting, maybe waiting for some crowd noise to die down. Now he's going into a service routine. It's super tense out here in Monte Carlo. And it's an unreturnable serve from Holger Runa. But it's been called out, so they've got to start again. Second serve, Runa adjusts his shirt. Don't think he has much space to adjust his shorts. He goes out wide again. Backhand from Dimitrov for going for the pass. Runa just about picks it off and now he's defending at the net. Again, lob from Dimitrov, but it was kind of defensive from no man's land. And Runa gets the game. This match is going to a deciding set tiebreak. We were covering a dramatic tiebreak during the, during the uh, earlier match between Sinner and Struth. As Kira was as Kira was bringing us that one, and I know you're probably tuning in, going, "Well, hang on a minute. I was expecting um, to get Casper Rude and Hubert Hercatch. We are covering that. We will return to Rude Hercatch, but I think it would be remiss of us to not cover Runa and Dimitrov. By the way, Hercatch and Rude are back on court, and Hercatch has been taken to juice, but he's got game points in the opening game of this uh, of the second set." And caught Rainier the third. Slice from Dimitrov to the as her, uh, Runa runs into the net and puts away the backhand volley, and he's got the early mini break 1 0. Really good, showing his great ghosty, yes. 1 0. Runa serving to try and keep himself in this tournament. Where he's defending a lot of points. Serves, misses the first serve. This is a three, a th a, over three hour match. Three hours, 25 minutes on the clock. Second serve. Forehand from Dimitrov inside out. Backhand Runa up the line. Dimitrov manages to get to it. Now Runa's going to try and punch it with the inside out forehand again, trying to dominate with it. And it's too good. The defense of Dimitrov could not deal with that power, that pace. And it's 2-0. Certainly, Runa is certainly very keen to come into the net as Ghosty is pointing out in the chat. Very keen to come in and finish off as much as he can. As I said, we will go back to the um, the her catch and Rude match. Rude is leading by set to love. Backhand block return from Dimitrov is punished by the backhand from uh, Runa midcourt, and it's three zero. Rude has broken. Hubert Hercatch, by the way, for the early break in the second set. He leads 6-4-1 love. We, and we will return to that match once this is complete. This tie break should be over in the next five to ten minutes. Depending, uh, of course, Grigor Dimitrov may have other ideas and make it super tight. He's got two serves, the Bulgarian. Goes up the tee. 
and it's a short return for Rune. Um, Dimitrov is at the net. Oh, he's unlucky. He is so unlucky as the Rune Ru passing attempt clips the top of the net and bounces over Dimitrov's racket and he can't adjust in time. And Runa gets another mini break completely by luck. 4-0 to the Dane. Um, Ghosty, to answer your question, is not a super tiebreaker. Um, this is first to seven. Runa is over halfway there. Great first seven. Dimitrov is going to look to finish off from mid-court with the forehand, and he does. And I'll tell you what, this... Um, Like, it's interesting seeing such an aggressive strategy is working on this clay. Coming in to finish from the midcourt is working. 4-1. Dimitrov finally on the board in this tiebreaker. But he's, it feels like a long, long way to climb back. He's too many breaks down. They'll be changing ends after this point. Great tea serve from Runa, who then follows up with a fantastic plus one from midcourt, puts it away. 5-1. He's two points away from the next round. And of course, the winner, as Sean is pointing out, will be Yannick Sinner. And it will be a rematch of the epic semi-final that they played in Monte Carlo last year. And I don't think they've played since. Sinner came very close to making the final against Rublev, but Runa was way too stubborn for him. But this is a whole new version of Yannick Sinner. Kasper Ruud, by the way, is 30-15 up in this service game. 5-1. Runa leads. Two points away from this match. Had to save match points in the previous service game. Great serve again. Dimitrov blocked back return. Forehand inside out from Dimitrov. It's a bit more neutralised now. Dimitrov got himself into this round. Now moves Runa around with the forehand. Again, the Dimitrov find out the line. Runa's on the defence with the backhand. Goes cross court. Slice from Dimitrov into the net. Couldn't live with the Runa backhand. He gave Runa time on the backhand and that was enough. And it's 6-1 Runa. He has five match points. The first of which will be on the Dimitrov serve. Shot clock counts down. The Danish flags are waving in the crowd. And Holger Runa looks ready to take on this serve from Grigor Dimitrov and get himself into the Monte Carlo quarter finals. Serve from Dimitrov. Runa backhand just long on the return. Just, just missed. Runa wants it checked because he knows if it's in, it's automatically his game. The umpire's down to check. Carlos Bernardes. Confirms it's out by the finest of margins. 6-2. Dimitrov has saved the first match point. Still formal. Yeah, electronic line warning confirms it was definitely out. Obviously, we'll be getting full electronic line warning on the ATP from 2025. Serve from Dimitrov is... Is good, but gets the return. Rune gets it in play now. There's trading crop hands cross court. Miscued forehand from Dimitrov gives it to Holger Runa, who is into the quarterfinals of Monte Carlo of the Monte Carlo Masters. Heartbreak for Dimitrov, who did have match points. But there we go. And so we return to Court Rainier the third. Um and Casper Ruud has actually given, has won nine out of the last 10 points. And it's love 30 on the Hercatch serve. Hercatch manages to end that run of points, though, and with an ace, 9-2. So it's 15-30. Sorry, I'm, I'm still in tiebreak mode. And that would be super tiebreaker points if it was 9-2. First serve is a let from Hercatch as it was clips the top of the net and takes a lot of the, takes some of the pace off. First serve out wide from her catch. Runa gets an epic passing shot return, though, on the backhand. And that was just too good. That was an insane return from Kasper Rude as her catch tried to come in for the serve volley. That backhand just clips just on the line. And it's 15.40 for a double break for Kasper Rude. First serve ace out wide from her catch, though, to save the first. 
Hey, look, it's two Rue people from South uh, from um, Scandinavia. And that's two aces to save two break points from Hubert Hercatch. That's a Hubert Hercatch special right there. So two break points saved. But then he goes out wide, too wide with that first serve, her catch. So it's going to be second serve here. Serves. Rude runs out to hit the forehand and it's another passing shot winner. Yeah, you could probably hear the neighbor's dog. Um, probably trying to get a word in edgeways about the tennis. Or probably wants me to shut up, but I'm not going to shut up because it's break point. 2-0. Serves, Hercatch serves up the tee, but Rude gets it back in play. Hercatch, oh my word, could not deal with that amazing return from Casper Rude. And the ball just comes into the net. And it is three love Casper Rude with a double break in the second set. Very, very much in control of this. Um, of this match. Yeah, everyone's excited for Runa Sinner coming up. I'm going to try and preview it a little bit with Jerome later when he comes on, I think. Um, so Runa, is Ghosty asking, is Runa going to win ugly on his way to a Monte Carlo title? Good question. He's going to have to. He's trying to recover his mojo, trying to recover his form. And I think the only way for um, Runa to... Uh, win uh the way for runa to win this title is going to be uh by fighting for it and actually do you know what i think that's the only way he ever wins titles full stop i don't think i could imagine how runa storming his way to a title at this point in his career but yannick sin is a tough ask and yannick sin is going to make him fight for it i don't think like he's going to get a set in that battle or make it two tie breaks I find it highly unlikely that uh, that it's going to be a straightforward win for Holger Rune. So there you go. That's my uh, that's my stance on it. I think it's not impossible for Rune to win this Monte Carlo title. I could see this being the place where he gets his mojo back. Yannick Sinner's is looking like a very different beast, though, and I think Sinner wants revenge from last year, and I think he's going to get it. And it's hard to imagine anyone other than Sinner winning this title at the minute, especially with Alcaraz not playing. Djokovic might have something to say, though. I think Djokovic on claim might be the one to give Sinner a reality check. Depends on how Djokovic... But this is Djokovic on Monte Carlo clay, and there's a lot of um, unknowns there. Unretainable serve from Kasparu to move to 30 love in this game maintain this stranglehold he's got of this match but i say stranglehold don't forget Stefan Sitsipas led by a set and five love and had match points at five love and had to still get it in the second set tie break so nothing is set in stone ace from casper Ruud, who maybe might be just that little bit mentally tougher than Sitsipas. that's a debate for another day That's a debate for another day. Who's who's the mentally who is the uh, the more resolute player at the minute? Back in the day, I would have said Sitsi Pass. Inside out forehand winner from Rude. He's just on fire right now. Full love in the second set. Um her catch is coming out to serve, and he's probably a little bit despondent. Probably a little bit despondent as Rude has been in every single service game. He's going to have to really go for it, as shown by that first serve being slightly, slightly long. Inside out forehand winner from her catch. So 15 love for the pole. Rude is saying so far back. This is in the dial levels of return position. Gets that in play. Her catch is going to drop shot him. Rude, Rude, oh my word. <laughs> Rude ran it down, but 
didn't quite make contact on it and ended up hitting a counter drop shot right to her catch, who easily put it away. Her catch then serves up the tee, backhand from Rude Short. Her catch puts away the forehand winner, 40 love. This is the service game that he needs to give him a bit more confidence to try and mount a comeback. Also, why is the interview getting a team bus? Surely the event's not over yet. They've still got some more playoffs to play and some more group matches to play. I would thought. Um, her catch, by the way, unretainable serve. Oh, back to the hotel. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. 4 1, change of ends. Um, I have to say, I'm enjoying following um, the Billie Jean King Cup. Uh, Euro Africa Group One matches um, with Talking Tennis. Actually, I would not have paid attention to it had uh, no all these brilliant interviews not been coming out. I'm looking forward to more of them. I think we've only got like a couple more days of it, um, and of course tomorrow the main Billie Jean King Cup matches get underway. Um, I will be keeping an eye um, from my house on um, the GB France tie. I think it's very fascinatingly set up, as we discussed on WTA Weekly. Um, and we've also got um uh, uh but we've also got um yeah Romania versus um Ukraine, which is also a potentially interesting one. Halep was due to play, doesn't look like she is now. Uh but with injury, I think she's now decided that maybe her comeback is better served by focusing on the one two five k in Portugal. Um, but we'll see. Um, wow, Kiki Burton's is she the Dutch captain now? That's cool. I'm kind of rooting for the Dutch actually because I've got a Dutch friend. I think Ghosty it's one of those injuries. Like, it probably is an injury, but it's probably a precautionary thing rather than anything serious. I don't think it's... Uh, like, I've just heard something on the grapevine. Great. I'm a table set from Casper Rude, 15 love. Motoring right now. Um... I need to have a look at the draw, actually, for this. Uh, I'm going to have a look at the draw now. As a uh, Sonigo and Humbert are coming out in Côte de Pons, um, and I think the winner of this match plays the Sonigo humbert match winner. And I would, um, I'm going to be honest, no disrespect to either of those players, but I think if Casper Ruud wins this, he's the favourite to make the Monte Carlo semi-finals. Obviously, Humbert is good enough to pull off the upset. Um, he's done that plenty of times before. Equally, um, Sonigo is stubborn enough to make a fight of it. But I think looking at the way, I would be surprised. But who knows? Casper Rude is now serving at 30. Love goes out wide. Her catch puts the return into the net on the, on the forehand. And it's 40 love. And now it's Rude's turn to potentially motor through a um, service game. Her catch held the previous service game to love. Only an hour on the clock. I did not think this would be that straightforward for Casper Ruud. Kogach gets the return in play. Now they're trading again. Inside out forehand to the Ruud backhand up the line, which is just too good. And I have to say, Ruud is hitting that backhand better than I think I've ever seen him hit it. Gets the game, holds to love. 5-1 is one game away from the quarterfinals in Monte Carlo. Um... Uh, I think Ghosty, I've seen some prices saying that like tickets like 50, 60 euros. Um, apparently it's cheaper to stay in Nice and get the train in rather than stay in Monte Carlo itself. Monte Carlo itself is expensive, but it's not too bad if you stay in Nice and then get the train. That's according to James, who wrote an article on it two, um, two years ago. Back up the line from her catch. Rude scrambling the forehand short. Oh my word. Her catch's overhead is completely mishit. And it just sort of disappointingly flops into the net. 
he was hoping for he was hoping for a big one and well it didn't quite happen and then puts the forehand into the net trying to move rude around and that was a definite rushed forehand from her catch she's now at love 13 potentially two points away from losing this match love 30 for the pole Rude is just dialed in, ready to try and get the job done as quickly as possible. And then just sit back and watch and see how much of a fight it is for his opponent. Great return from Rude, but her catch is at the net and puts away that backhand volley. So 15-30. Serves out wide from her catch, backhand uh, short from Rude. But the inside out forehand trying to go for the... Uh, from her catch trying to punish Rude is way out and it's 15-40 and he's just trying too hard. Two match points for Casper Rude. Her catch is already serving, goes out wide. Rude goes for the big forehand return. He was trying to go for the haymaker off the first serve. Why not? 30-40, second match point. First serve from her catch is in play. Backhand from Rude. Oh, gosh, my stream reset. Her catch punished it with a backhand at the net. I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to try and see if I can get my stream to catch up. Bear with. Yeah, it's sort of reset itself weirdly there. This match might be over about five minutes before Jerome actually joins. We're at Deuce now. Her catch serves into the net. Double fault. Another match point for Kasper Rude. Not ideal for the pole. And um, more opportunities for the Norwegian to go through. He joins fellow Scandinavian. His rival for the Roo, Runa. Backhand up the line from her catch. Too good. Rude got a racket on it, but not enough. Deuce. Really nice backhand up the line. I completely agree with you, um, Ghosty. Hubie is not a... Surf bot. Her catch is not a surf bot. He's got a little bit more to him. I think he's very, I think he would have done very, very well back in the 90s. Great return from Rude. Long return from Rude. He got purchase on it, but it went over the baseline and now her catch has got game point. Her catch has game point now um, to try and takes to a change of ends, but the first serve off the top of the net and over the baseline. So it's second serve to try and close this game out for Hubert. Her catches go straight into it. Huge forehand from Rude. Tried to hit the big return, puts it in the net, and it's 5-2. So he's going to have to serve it out. Ugo and Bear. Yeah, Ugo is um, quite an unconventional player. I'd say he's a lefty. Um... I, I need to actually watch more of him. I think I've only seen a couple of his matches. But he does like his junk balls, a bit like her catch. Um, actually, yeah, probably like a Manorino ghosty, but with a bit more to his game. And certainly, I you know those two are currently battling to be uh, the best French player in the world. In terms of the rankings, we, of course, know that the best French player is actually Gael Monfils. Best French player in history, you'd have to go all the way back to the uh, Musketeers of the 1920s, 30s. Um, uh, Jean Bartra, Henri Leconte, and of course, the founder of our favourite um, crocodile brand, um, René Lacoste. Um, long socks. Not sure. Male or female? Yeah, could be interesting. Obviously, we've had some decent French players since French, but obviously the last French male Grand Slam champion was Yannick Noah um, at the uh, Roland Garros 1983. Actually, did, have there been a French player who's won a Grand Slam since? I think Noah is the last French player to have won a slam because I don't think... Um, sorry, Henri Leconte was the 80s. I mean, Henri Cochet from the thir 20s. Um, Henri Leconte got to a Grand Slam final. Guy Forget never got that far. Um, Zonga got to a Grand Slam final. 
Artifice ghosty, maybe? Huge huge cross-court forehand from Rude, who then comes into the net to try and get a volley, but it's really um, awkward. Really awkward, and um, it's 15 love, Casper Rude. Producer, put your headphones in. <laughs> no one needs to hear my commentary. Oh, right. Oh, never mind. Um, goes out wide. Ruder, uh, rude. Misses the first serve. Maybe a little bit of nerves trying to close this out. Short second serve. Her catch slices the forehand. Rude goes cross court. Forehand up the line from her catch. Now Rude's on the defence and it goes out and her catch is stepping things up, putting the pressure on Casper Rude. 15 all. Hubert Hercatch is not done yet, even though he's 5-2 down with a double break. As I said before, City Pass was 5-love up, had match point, was not over at that point against Ferev. Kasper Rude serves out wide, misses it, so it's a second serve. This is probably going to be the scrappiest service game he's had for a while. Rude could be adopted French, I suppose, given he's sponsored by... Uh, Renault and has been to two Roland Garros finals, back to back the last two. Um, backhand from Rude to the backhand of Hercatch, just close the net, forehand Rude, middle of the court, it's neutral around it at the minute, being pushed back by Hercatch with the forehand who goes big on the cross court and it's 15 30. That's probably one of the biggest cross court forehands Her Hercatch has ever hit. Ah, friend of the show, Constant Lestienne, or maybe just friend of uh, Jamie, Jamie Dubon. Um, friend of Jamie Dubon, uh, Constant Lestienne, but we'll see. Um, obviously, hero of our Serpentine coverage. Short first serve from Rude, but it's um, still catches her catch out, and he puts the return into the net. 30 all. Casper Rude is now two points away from this match. The ruthless machine that is Casper Rude now. Casper Rude. He's going to serve up the T long. Second serve. Serves short. Backhand in play from her catch. It's all good. And great find up line from Casper Rude to set up another match point. He's had two on the, he's had three on the her catch serve already. This is now his fourth of the match, and it's he's in control of this one. Here we go. Match point. Casper Root. First serve is out wide. Backhand cross court to the backhand cross court. They're trading a minute. Her catch changed direction with the backhand. Forehand cross court from Root. Short. Her catch is pushing him back with the cross court forehand. And it puts Root under enough pressure on the forehand that Root goes long. And it's another match point saved by some aggressive play by Hubert Hercatch. And continues to make Casper Root wait that just like a little bit longer. Casper Root goes up the tee on the serve and the return from her catch is just long. The block back return, it was too good. And it's advantage to Casper Root. Fifth match point for the Norwegian. Let's see if he can get it done. 5 2. Goes up the body serve, and it's a great and the return from her catches into the net. Rude finally gets the job done, but to be fair, it didn't look much in doubt as he walks to the net. He is into the Monte Carlo quarterfinals. He knocks out the Esther Real champion Hubert Hercatch and ends his clay court streak, and hopefully is going to start his own as Casper Rude progresses into the next round at Monte Carlo, and he will play the winner of the match that's going on on the other court right now between. Lorenzo Sonigo and um, uh, with Lorenzo Sonigo and uh, Hugo Humbert. So I'll probably switch over to see what's happening with that in the background uh, whilst we get that underway. Uh, is that? Oh no, it ended the stream, I think. So I'm going to have to turn on, uh, do something else here. Um, but yeah, really, really good win from Casper uh, Rood. Um, to go through, um, I don't think um, anyone is, 
is surprised by that, but that was probably one of the best wins um, of um, his career, actually, I think. Um, maybe that's an exaggeration, but um, certainly one of the most impressive wins I've seen him have. Um, looked very much in control of that uh, match. So, yeah, that's uh, that's rude for you. Um, in terms of the other matches, we'll talk about them with Jerome, but obviously the big... Um, the big stories would be some drama in the Medvedev Hatchinov match, some drama in the uh, obviously drama with the Setsipas Zverev match. The best match of the day will probably be um, the Runa Dimitrov match, and arguably, probably that's the best match of the um, best match of the week so far. But obviously, there's still so much more left to play. <laughs> Here, playing Monte Carlo as uh, yeah, we've got uh, the um, other, we've got the other sort of quarter, the last last sixteen match, the final last sixteen match underway. It's only the first game between Umber and Sonigo, and uh, Umber has advantage on his serve. Not necessarily going to commentate on it because we're going to um, uh, chat about that with Jerome. Um, so we'll see how um, how that all goes. But uh, yeah, if you want to ask me some questions about what I think about how Monte Carlo is going um, or just random questions, go for it. This is where um, Nerlan would have been would be great to have in the chat because I'm sure he's got some good he's got some good uh, um, random ones or even keen. Although he prefers to ask Damien niche questions about the challenger tour. <laughs> um, I'm now being asked by our producer whether um how i take um like just sort of random questions around uh, how what i enjoy i mean i'm british so of course i drink tea <laughs> i'm not really a coffee guy i can't stand the stuff um no need for caffeine this is all me uh i'll take i'll take tea with uh, milk no sugar um and i'll i think uh Fish and chips or roast dinner completely depends on the context. If I'm going, if, I'm, if someone else is cooking, uh, roast dinner. If I'm cooking, fish and chips. Uh, digestives or another biscuit. I mean, I'll snack on digestives quite happily, but it wouldn't be what I treat myself to. Oh, ghosty, do you have black tea? Yeah, I'm not against black tea. I'm not against that. I'm bad having some trouble closing this game out. Oh. You try to get me in trouble, producer. You try to get me in trouble. Um, in terms of who is an actual GOAT contender, Serena Williams. In terms of which player I prefer, I would be more likely, I would have been more likely to support Venus. So there you go. Like, un like statistically, Serena is one of the best of all time. I think Venus has Venus had a bit more uh, vulnerabilities to her game, but I think uh, I probably would have warmed. I probably warm a little bit more to Venus um, as a person. But no, so there you go. There you go. That's my my personal choice versus what the overwhelming head choice would be. Um, they're both interesting for different reasons. This game, by the way, um, opening game between Sonigo and Umber is uh, still going. Like, you know, they're seven minutes into the match and they haven't even finished the first game yet. So Sonigo is obviously pretty determined. I think he's he wants to make the most of this lucky loser spot he got, um, obviously benefiting from Alcaraz making it. Oh. Um... Uh, Serena Williams or Maria Sharapova? Um, I was never a big supporter of either of them. I think if I was to pick one now, or retro retrospectively, I'd probably choose Serena. I think I was much more interested in her journey than Sharapova's. I think Sharapova would, was quite frustrating at points. Um. So, but yeah, 
that would be uh, that would be my choice. So uh, right, I think rather than trying to drag uh, this one out, maybe we uh, we take a break, and then Jerome and I will come back and we'll um, wrap up all things Monte Carlo. Um, John, I know you've just joined, but um, that's probably no, no, it's, uh, I'm just my preferred yeah. option. Yeah, just wrap things up and we'll be back in just under an hour. Uh, and you and Jerome can talk all things Monte Carlo. Sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to it. All right. So we'll see you in an hour um, where we will keep on talking tennis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.